Set in the year 1950, the story is about an idealistic town called Victory. The modest community is encircled by desert on all sides. Several hundred occupants live here, every one of whom are very rich and carry on with a posh lifestyle. All male occupants residing in the town are participating in a puzzling project. The Triumph Central Command is arranged at the highest point of a mountain in the desert. However, ladies are totally taboo to wander into the desert. Legend says that assuming one wins up there, they won't ever return the same. But ladies are supposed to simply be worried about their own homes and resides, and not question what their spouses accomplish for a living. They are just informed that their husbands are associated with the improvement of progressive material. While the husbands invest all their energy at the Triumph Task Base Camp, the wives get to invest their time partaking in the magnificence, extravagance and lewdness of their community. The pioneer behind this entire spot and undertaking is Frank. Everyone views him as a hero. The entire town is consistently impacted with Plains' rousing discourses through speakers, where he vows to make something great. One day, the area is coordinating a house party. The participants incorporate our hero Alice and her better half Jack, among other neighbors who all appear to be truly near one another. While the men continue to discuss how they are truly fortunate to be a piece of the Victory Project, every one of the ladies appear to enjoy interior tattle or play drinking games. The following morning, we see Alice cook breakfast for Jack as he prepares and heads out for work at precisely the same time as the other men. All of them get into their particular vehicles as the wives bid them goodbye. The wives then, at that point, take part in a kind of schedule that incorporates cleaning each bit of dust of the house and cooking a full luxurious feast for their husbands. Occasionally, they have fun by social occasion at the local area house, or by leveling up their bullet abilities under the direction of Shelley. She is a kind of unbending lady who is by all accounts dead set on ensuring that these women follow the guidelines and guidelines set by her significant other and organizer behind this ideal world. Frank, everything appears to be wonderful in this idealistic town. But the controlled air pocket of this perfect world gets its most memorable trigger when straightforward organizes a party to welcome the freshest individuals from the local area. Bill and Violet. Everyone is available there and like generally. Every one of the people appear to be in completo of how Blunt is doing Triumph Town. However, before he can continue any further, a lady named Margaret steps forward. She looks noticeably restless and upset, yet tracks down the boldness to ask the question that every one of them have been fearing to ask. What are we doing here? This stuns every one of the participants, including Margaret's better half, as nobody has at any point addressed Frank before. Nonetheless, Honest conveys one more motivating discourse and wows the crowd, provoking every unedited disregard Margaret. After the discourse, Alice goes searching for a better half Jack, yet she startlingly witnesses Margaret's better half, attempting to coercively feed her a few pills that the town doctor Dr. Collins has recommended her. However, everybody realizes that Margaret is sick, so she doesn't give a lot of consideration and leaves. The following day, as every one of the ladies, including Alice, are talking locally center, the subject of Margaret is again brought up. The motor mouth of the gathering, Rabbit uncovers that Margaret turned out to be deranged because she neglected to keep the one guideline set by forthcoming to not wander in the desert. Through flashbacks, we are shown that Margaret lost her child when she was in the desert and that injury has set her in a condition of complete disfigurement. Alice, who is paying attention to this, has all the earmarks of being worried. That night, Alice has bad dreams where she observes surprising ballet performers in black and white. The following day, another unusual thing happens. As Alice is setting up a dinner, she observes that the eggs are totally unfilled from the inside. Hence, after Jack leaves for work, she takes a truck ride to clear her mind. All the ladies get down at the shopping center, yet Alice chooses to proceed with going. However, when she is going to arrive at as far as it goes, she observes a red plane losing its balance over the desert skyline. Panic, Alice requests that the truck driver take her close to the accident site. Yet the last completely freezes and tells her that he isn't permitted to. This is on the grounds that the plane has crashed in the Perhumid Desert. But regardless of the relative multitude of alerts, Alice chooses to go all alone as she is unyielding on saving the survivors. After strolling for some time, she ultimately arrives at the desert, which is fruitless and empty as expected. Alice doesn't track down the plane or any destruction. Yet what she finds is an enormous mountain, which leads her to a building. This building is, as a matter of fact, the Triumph Town Base Camp itself, the spot where all the husbands evidently go to work, trying to find support. Alice adjusts her face to the structure's glass opening, and then next we know, she is once again at home awakening from a horrible that had comparative pictures 
Atcher past hallucination. Alice is clearly stunned and befuddled by the episode, yet she chooses to conceal it from Jack. Unfortunately, throughout the span of the following couple of days, her waking bad dreams keep getting worse. Most of the time, she continues to fantasize about the ballet artists, and in one instance, she feels like she is being squashed by the walls of her own house. But one day, all that changes. She witnesses a discouraged Margaret, committing the unthinkable. Alice races to save her, yet a lot of men, wearing red, unexpectedly show up and drag her away. That night, she clears up the whole occurrence for her significant other. Jack, yet shockingly, he reveals that Margaret is alive and well. She never dedicated the unbelievable and had quite recently sneaked through the bathroom. Alice, who is in finished doubt, doesn't trust it and attempts to search her answers, but Jack quiets her down and requests that she take rest. Unfortunately for Alice, her mind flights keep deteriorating, so the town physician Dr. Collins is brought to their home one day. He leads a few tests on her and endorses her a few pills, guaranteeing that she is just stressed out. However, Alice states that she is fine and keeps getting some information about Margaret. When she begins becoming impolite, Dr. Collins uncovers that Margaret is fine. However, her husband was terminated from his occupation due to her actions, and now they have been moved from the town. Hearing this, Alice stays quiet for Jack's sake. Just then, she sees a record in Dr. Collins' bag that has Margaret's name on it. Alice secretly takes it while the specialist is away and later goes through it. To her consternation, its vast majority has been passed out. The main thing she can find is details about Margaret's disintegrating mental health. The following day, Jack moves toward her and gives her a dress. He requests that she wear it right away as the top of the town. Honest has welcomed them to a unique event. Despite not feeling 100% Alice obliges, as she has no other choice. At the occasion in any case, she again starts fantasizing and goes into a psychological breakdown. Having had enough, she begs her significant other to get back, yet, all of a sudden, straight to the point calls him in front of an audience, apparently to make an announcement. As Alice watches on apprehensively, blue commendations, Jack is the best representative, and advances him to the chief position. The swarm ejects and cheers, and Jack begins shouting with happiness. Yet a confounded and distraught Alice races to the restroom, where she stalls in tears on stage, playing requests that Jack dance, and like a mannequin he obliges. It nearly feels like it is an immediate similitude for how every one of the strings in Triumph Town are reattached to Blunt's hands, and he is puppeteering them all through. Meanwhile, the loudmouth Rabbit approaches Alice in the washroom, yet rather than trying to help her, she attempts to play some sense into her. She advises Alice to quit being insane and support her better half on his huge night. The following day, Jack coordinates an advancement party at his place, and Alice is entrusted with the cooking. She appears to be shockingly quiet for a perplexed only the other individual day. However, Everything has all the earmarks of being a piece of her brain's plan. Soon, every one of the occupants of the area show up, alongside extraordinary visitor, Plain, and the spouse, Shelley. After some time, as Alice is in the kitchen, Blunt methodologies her and says, I'm sorry, Bunny, didn't really accept that you. He then, at that point, compliments Alice on her sound judgment and provokes her to find more about the place. This at long last affirms that Alice isn't insane, and anything she is fantasizing had something to do with this unusual town. Hence, at supper, a tired Alice chooses to take focus stage. She defies every one of the men about the town's requirement for flawlessness, and asks why the woman can't adventure into the desert, as Jack and the others tune in dismay. Alice draws out a couple particular similarities between how every one of them arrived in Triumph Town and how their life before it was a Tubler. Strangely, every one of the occupants are either from Baltimore or from Chicago. All of the couples met at a similar train station in a similar way, and every one of them had their honeymoons in a similar venue. Alice proceeds with that all the food items in Triumph Town, going from vegetables to packaged food, are produced under the name of Frank. But in spite of this, nobody flutters an eyelash that something is obviously wrong. Unfortunately, her cases are demonstrated right, as every one of the caves basically imagine that whatever she is saying is a crazy burst out. When everybody leaves Alice, having broken Jack's standing, lets him know that there's something truly amiss with Triumph Town, and that they ought to leave immediately. And regardless of being totally humiliated before others, Jack consents to whatever Alice says, guaranteeing that he will cherish her regardless of what. Unfortunately, similarly as they are going to leave in their vehicle, Jack begins saying sorry profusely. 
He can't proceed with it. Alice gradually grapples with his treachery, yet before she can respond, similar men entered from prior show up at the scene and powerfully take Alice away. Next, we see her getting shock therapy. The explanations behind this are not revealed presently, yet these electroshocks are intimately cut with the genuine truth of who she is. We get a summary of Alice and her significant other Jack residing in a humble apartment. It is the 21st hundred years and not the 1950s. Alice gives off an impression of being an attendant who works late night shifts at the clinic on the grounds that Jack has as of late lost his job. One night, she returns, depleted, following a 30-hour shift in which she needed to see through three separate surgeries. Jack attempts to be heartfelt with her, however, Alice is excessively drained for it. This shows that the couple is gradually floating separated in view of Alice's chaotic work schedule. Hence, being jobless and desolate. Jacks indiscriminately begins following the proclaiming recordings of a personality named Frank. Frank is somebody who has obviously fostered an innovation that permits couples to reside in a very advanced computer-generated experience, a recreation of a 1950s ideal world that screams perfection from the get-go. One night, Jack, who has lost all feeling of control because of his delicate male self-image, desodesto contact Frank. He then, at that point, learns of the triumph undertaking and promptly chooses to be a piece of it. Not just that, he powers Alice into this experiment. For a short second, we see her power connected to the reenactment's ground control, which turns out to be their bed. Soon, Jack rests next to her, and he as well, enters the universe of simulation. Following this, we are shown a montage that gives us more insights regarding the simulation. We get to realize that the whole thing doesn't have Alice's consent. It is something that Jack settles all alone to get some sort of command over what his spouse does. In the reproduction, Jack decides to have an English personality, and since there's no other way to it, Alice's whole memory is cleared off before she enters Triumph as a citizen. We likewise learn later that every one of the men in Triumph Town have deliberately participated to be a member, while their accomplices. The ladies have been held hostage against their wills and have been transferred into the simulation. All the children that are apparent in the town are basically NPCs. They are not real. They have been intended for the guardians, who could never have youngsters in their genuine lives. After the montage closes, we see Alice, totally cleared off of her new designs to escape, returning back to her unspoiled home. However, this time, the recreation and the falsehood don't appear to carry on for too long as she gets set off into reality when she perceives the tune that Jack is humming. It is one of her main tunes who were genuine in the 21st 100 years, which she often used to sing while at work. Now, everything streaks before Alice, and she understands that it was her better half Willis than the guilty party all along. Caught in the act, Jack at last comes clean. He uncovers that he thoroughly took care of their own great, as their life in the 21st century was going downhill. Jack was jobless, and Alice lacked the opportunity to try and converse with him properly. Hence, he took the difficult choice and enlisted them into the Triumph Venture, where they have an immaculate life, with bountiful cash and respect. Jack further uncovers that life for Alice is extremely straightforward. She should simply make friends and relax, while he needs to get once again to this present reality and gather cash to keep the reenactment running. Here is at long last uncovered where every one of the husbands of Triumph Town go. They don't work for the improvement of any moderate material, yet they go to Victory Base Camp to leave the recreation and attempt to bring in some cash, all things considered, to give their wives a superior life. However, in spite of hearing this, Alice is as yet harmed that her significant other double-crossed her. One thing prompts another, and the two get into a contention which closes with Alice smashing a glass over Jack's head. Sadly, the effect kills him. When out of the house, a bloodied Alice surprises everybody and explicitly tells them that they are being constrained by a program that Blunt has created. All the occupants attempt to stop her, with the exception of Bunny. This is where we come to discover that out of the multitude of ladies, just Rabbit knows about that truth behind victory. It turns out that she consented to pursue it on the grounds that in reality, her children need. Bunny advises Alice to take off, making sense of that on the off chance that somebody bites the dust in the reenactment. They will, likewise, kick the bucket in the genuine world. 
And now that the men dressed in red are coming for her, Alice has almost no time. Hearing this, a scared Alice quickly gets in her vehicle and drives her off to the own place from which she can escape, the Triumph Town headquarters. On her way, she is met by Plains henchmen. The men dressed in red have been entrusted to catch Alice or perhaps kill her, thus stopping her genuine body from truly waking up. This step is taken in light of the fact that Alice never pursued the task, and on the off chance that she awakens and reports the specialists about it, Frank's realm will be doomed. Somehow, she sidesteps the hooligans and arrives at the mountain. However, midway, her vehicle stalls, so she is compelled to escape by walking, with the men in red following her closely. Elsewhere, as honest as following the whole improvement by means of call, his better half, Shelley, surprisingly stabs him in the chest and kills him. Before she leaves, she essentially says, it's my turn now. Meanwhile, Alice arrives at the highest point of the mountain, but right when she is going to move toward the window of the base camp, she has one of her dreams where she sees Jack requesting that she stay in triumph and accompany him. However, liberated from control and having fostered a still, small voice of her own, Alice overlooks him and in the long run contacts the glass of the base camp window. For a second, the screen blurs to dark, and before the film closes, we momentarily hear a woman gasping for air connoting that Alice is magically transported back to this present reality.